Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to another Tuesday video. Happy Tuesday. Today I'm going to be telling you my top 10 favorite vampire movies. Well, January is actually blood donor month. I thought it would be appropriate to tell you my favorite vampire movies because I don't know just like blood donor and vampire just kind of goes together. Also, I realized like the way I kind of intro this <laughs> makes it sound like it's like a sponsored video or a partnered video. It is absolutely not. I just, you know, was looking up, you know, all the months of the year to see if there was any like, you know, like everything has a month. Like there's, you know, Women in Horror Month, which is next month and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I was looking to see what January was. And the only one that I could really relate to horror was Blood Donor Month. So that's that's all. It's not sponsored, I promise. The fact that I keep talking about it makes it sound even more like it's sponsored and I'm trying to hide it. It's not. I'm Enough sure with the formalities. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> all right, so this one, like I said, is ranked. So I'm gonna start off with number 10, which is The Vampire Lovers. It is not perfect by any means. There's something endearing and maybe a little funny about the film. Um, Plus it was inspired by the novella Carmilla, which is from the point of view of a young woman who is being stalked by a female vampire. And fun fact, the novella actually predated Bram Stoker's Dracula by about 20 years. Next on my list at number nine is Fright Night, which is a new favorite. I still don't know how it took me as long as it did <laughs> to see it. The first time I watched it was this past October during my 31 Days of Horrorween. I'm glad I finally saw it. Um, honestly, you could probably just sell the movie by showing that nightclub scene when Chris Sarandon is being all sexy and Amanda Bierce is being all gorgeous. Also, she's in a trance, I do realize, but she's still gorgeous. I love it because the movie brings like the the classic idea of the vampire which we're used to seeing in these gothic castles and long cloaks and very regal old beings um, into suburbia which you know even though the movie is fun and funny it has a scary undertone to it that you know that these creatures could be among us. <laughs> it's terrifying and fun. Next on my list at number eight is Near Dark. Yet another example of these classic old creatures that we're used to seeing in castles and cloaks um, into modern times. Obviously this came out in 1987, but still for the time it came out, modern. Not only modern, but like banal locations like the freaking desert, like. <laughs> I also love the struggle of Caleb in the movie to wrestle with being a vampire and staying true to who he is. Um, most vampire movies, as appealing as they make it seem to be a vampire, at least initially, they often end with the realization that eternal life is not all that's cracked up to be. But Near Dark goes about this a different way by turning the protagonist into a vampire where normally our protagonist remains human and is fighting it like and is fighting against these monstrous creatures where Caleb also kind of has to fight against himself in the movie. So it's interesting. Next on my list at number oh gosh. Seven, I've already lost count. This is going great. Uh, the Lost Boys, another 80s vampire flick. Um, man, the 80s were some time for the vampires, am I right? Says the girl who wasn't even a thought in her parents' brain in the 80s. <laughs> I feel like these last three movies I talked about, there is this pattern of vampires in suburban or quote unquote normal situations. Like I mentioned gone are the gothic castles and the cloaks and the Eastern European locations. Not only that, but vampires in these 80s movies were much younger looking. No offense to Lugosi or Lee, but I wouldn't need to be put in a trance to give in to Kiefer Sutherland as a vampire. Just saying. And Lost Boys to me is just like the most 80s out of the last three movies I was talking about. Um, it's freaky, it's fun, and it has a killer soundtrack. Number six on my list is Blade. So the next three movies I'm gonna be talking about are placed where they are almost entirely because of nostalgia. 
So keep that in mind before you drag me over the coals for putting these movies above classics like Fright Night and Near Dark. And for whatever reason, I just used to watch the shit out of the Blade movies when I was a kid. It was such a cool and different concept to me back then. And I feel like um, I related it a lot to The Matrix. Like there was a lot of action and stuff like that. So I think my, you know, my young brain was like, ooh, this is similar. Um, and I loved The Matrix movies as well. So I like really latched onto these movies. And I love how the vampires were portrayed in this movie. I like low-key love the way they're like fucking like all the way down their chin and their neck and shit like splits open and there's like all these teeth and like <laughs> it was such a cool, it was like, I feel like vampirism is already a mutation of like the human form almost. It, like I guess depending on like what, you know, what mythos you want to take with the vampires. Um, but they're usually a human that's turned into a vampire. And then this is like a mutation on the vampire, you know? So it's like we've got a human to vampire to vampire 2.0 or something. Because it's a very prominent reminder in the movie that while vampires can appear human and look human, they are far from human. Also, Wesley Snipes kicks all the ass. Next on my list at number five is Underworld. Very similar to Blade, I love Underworld because our main character kicks ass. You know, Kate Beckinsale in that I'm sure extremely uncomfortable leather one piece. Amazing, she's badass. Yet another odd pattern of similar vampire movies like the late 90s, early 2000s were all about these like action kick-ass vampire types with like guns and swords and shit and I love it. The series, the Underworld series is one that I have very fond memories of because it's the closest my best friend who categorically abhors the horror genre would come to a horror flick. So we routinely rented the Underworld movies for our movie nights and we went and watched the new releases in the theaters and things like that and yeah. Then on my list at number four is Queen of the Damned. By so many people's opinions, this movie is bad. And if I were watching it with a critical eye, it's got a lot of flaws. <laughs> but hot damn, if Stuart Townsend ain't the hottest damn vampire I have ever seen. The Queen Aaliyah kills it in her freaking like headdress and then her like weird but kind of hot like walk that she does like like strut slow thingy. I can't imitate it because I'm you know I'm not her. Plus that soundtrack. <laughs> Marilyn Manson <laughs> and Chester Bennington <laughs> and Jonathan Davis. All that new metal sound like brings me back to middle school, man. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sure most of you guys right now are just like cringing into yourselves. But the 90s and the early 2000s were my fucking <laughs> time, man. Like, sorry. I live for this movie. I love this movie. I don't care how cringy it is. It's just, it's very nostalgic and I love it. And I don't care what anybody thinks. And now for something completely different. Number three on my list is what we do in the shadows. I feel like this movie doesn't get talked about nearly enough as it needs to be. It is the perfect vampire horror comedy in my opinion. I remember seeing it kind of on a whim, like it kind of snuck up on me and it was playing in our local historic movie theater, you know, like one of those old movie houses sort of things. Very beautiful ceiling, ornate decorations. There's like an organist that plays uh, before, the <laughs> before the previews and things like that. Very cool, love that theater. And it seemed even more comical to me to see this movie in this movie theater because it's very, <laughs> it's like these, classic vampires that I was kind of talking about, or at least, you know, most of them are in the movie. Um, these very old vampires who are used to a different time trying to <laughs> be modern to hilarious effect. Humor is right up my alley. It cracks me the f up every time I watch it. Um, it's so good. It's one of those, like, if you still have not seen this movie, like, it needs to be on your... 2019 to watch list, like right now. Then at number two, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because I talk about this movie all the time, is 30 Days of Night. Every time we talk about vampire movies, I feel like I bring this one up. This is the vampire movie out of everything on this list, even my number one favorite, scares me the most. And it still scares me. <laughs> it scares me so much that I will forever 
think twice about visiting Alaska. I'm sure it's beautiful, but in the back of my mind, I'm gonna be petrified <laughs> because of this movie. Like, it's just like the isolation um, and just like, even the isolation, like, you know, like taking away the sun in the movie, just that idea of, you know, because of the weather, because of the earth, the environment, like you're stuck in this place <laughs> where it's night constantly like it's just a playground for vampires and then the vampires themselves are so like they're animals please don't take this out of context but they don't even speak english and i know how that sounds like i said don't take that the wrong way but it's like what i mean is it's like they're like vampires are already separated from humans they're different they're other they're something else but that just separates them even further so it's like these beings that these characters don't understand and they can't understand them because they don't understand what they're saying and it's just like these black shark-like eyes and these you know all their teeth are sharp not just their canines like they have this you know mouth full of sharp teeth and they're just like so animalistic and they're so scary like <laughs> i love 30 days of night it's one of those like it's it's one of the best examples of the joy of seeing a horror movie where you know if I explain that to like my best friend, she does not understand why I enjoy that feeling of being scared. Like why I would go back and watch 30 Days of Night as many times as I have, even though it still scares me, but it's just like the pure enjoyment of that. You guys understand, I don't need to explain it to y'all. So before we get to my number one vampire movie, I wanna give a shout out to some honorable mentions who I still really, really like, just didn't quite make the list. And those are A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, not for everybody, but a cool take on a vampire movie. Afflicted, again, very, very cool take on a vampire movie. It kind of goes the disease route and it's found footage, I mean, that should say enough. I don't say this a lot about found footage horror movies, but this one was pretty good. Um, From Dusk Till Dawn, if you want a good laugh. The Hunger, uh, if you want some real sexy vampire time. Um, and speaking of sexy vampire time, Interview with the Vampire. All right, number one on my list, honestly should not surprise anybody, um, is Nosferatu. Unless you subscribed to me super recently, you probably could have guessed that Nosferatu is gonna be my number one. I talk, like, again, whenever I'm talking about vampire movies, I talk about how Nosferatu is my favorite. I love the imagery of this movie, it's, you know, German expressionism, like it's very visually cool with all the shadows and distorted sets. And I love that Orlock is just like, always like framed in some sort of doorway or archway or window. And it's all very, you know, just set up. Like it's made with such intention and I love it. Um, I'm not saying all movies aren't made with intention, but you know what I mean. Like, and you know, speaking of Orlock himself with his just like rat-like features, which reminds you of, you know, like the rats that carried the plague, like him himself is a plague, a plague of death. It's great and it's badass for being the first adaptation of Dracula, even though it wasn't awesome authorized. <laughs> that is it for my top 10 favorite vampire movies with some honorable mentions thrown in there. Now before I end out this video I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room and maybe nobody noticed this but I feel like at least one person is gonna comment. Where was Dracula? You didn't talk about Dracula. Yeah I didn't talk about Dracula. Why not? Not that I dislike you know Bela Lugosi's Dracula or Christopher Lee's Dracula or all the Dracula movies that have been made. I mean, I love Gary Ullman as a vampire. He's awesome. But I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like Dracula movies are kind of like, are to horror what like <laughs> Romeo and Juliet is to romantic comedies. So, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet is a classic tale of star-crossed lovers and it has been remade many times into romantic comedies. And like, and why I say remade, like it's not, there are so many romantic comedies that aren't made to be an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, but it's got the same premise. Two people from different walks of life, either they butt heads or their family and friends don't like each other, but they fall in love anyway, despite all the odds, you know? Uh, <laughs> and I love Romeo and Juliet, I really do. Um, just like I love Dracula, but it's just been done 
so many times. I get tired of seeing them over and over and over again. Like obviously I have my favorites, but I feel like Dracula is the same way where it's just been remade so many times that I find myself drawn more to the vampire movies that play around with that concept. Like they bring the vampire to suburbia, like in Fright Night, or they make them these like animal creatures that don't speak any language we know and they have rows of sharp teeth like in 30 days of night. I just find myself drawn more to those movies. Um, but I will say for anybody mad that I didn't include Dracula, I kind of did with Nosferatu, so. <laughs> also, the Dracula movies have a lot to live up to for me because reading the book Dracula, that is one of the books that actually terrified me to the point where <laughs> I stayed up all night reading it because it was good, but mostly because it was scaring me so bad that I didn't want to close my eyes. Maybe I should do a video on books that have scared me that bad. <laughs> that could be an interesting one. I don't know, let me know if you want to see that. Sorry, I know the video is already long, but I just wanted to address that before I get comments about it. That's why Dracula is not on the list. Um, <laughs> I don't hate those movies though, before anybody drags me. Um, right. So let me know what your favorite vampire movies are in the comment section down below. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday and you can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video, even though it doesn't always work. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye. This video is brought to you by all of these awesome Patreon supporters who are listed here on the screen. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, if you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link that's in the description box. And if you want to check out more videos, you can click the video that's on the screen right now.